and welcome to Neat AI. So as I'm currently in the middle of coding up the exclusive OR solution for Neat, it's time to take a closer look at recurrent connections. To do this, I brought a solution into Excel, which I'm going to walk through and look at the inputs and outputs from each node and each layer and see how it flows from the input layer all the way through to the output layer. I'm going to do this for a solution with no recurrent connections and one with a recurrent connection, so we can compare the two. But before I do that, I've decided to open up the code for the Asteroids game and enable recurrent connections just to see what kind of effect they would have. Now, a recurrent connection is processed in exactly the same way as a regular connection. It's got both input and output values and a connection weight just the same as any other connection. They get added during the mutation phase when the add connection probability is met, but only if they satisfy the conditions for a valid connection. I'll talk more about those conditions later. If I want to exclude recurrent connections, I simply block them at this add connection stage. So the asteroid solution that we're looking at here is exactly the same as in previous videos, except we have recurrent connections switched on. It makes quite a difference. With a standard fixed topology, the network tended to get the looper solution appearing. It would simply go round and round in circles, and over time its aim would improve, and it would tend to relocate as well, but that looper approach was always present. With a neat solution, we did tend to get kamikaze hunter-killer solutions appearing before eventually settling down to the machine gunner, which would sit in the middle and blast away. The big difference I've made this time is that I have reduced the rate of fire to one shot per second, which means that the machine gunner solution is no longer valid because it simply doesn't have the rate of fire needed to blast all of the asteroids before getting hit, so it's forced to move and avoid them. The inputs remain the same as before. Nodes 1 and 2 are the direction and distance to the nearest asteroid, Node 3 is the direction the ship is pointing, and Node 4 is a bias node. By Generation 9, a recurrent connection appeared between the output node, which governs steering, and input node 1, which is the direction to the nearest asteroid. It's a fully connected network on startup, with no hidden nodes. The behaviour that emerged is much different than before, which looked quite artificial. Here it's much more human-like. There isn't a tendency to fly around like something possessed, blasting away at everything. Instead, it takes a much more measured and nuanced approach, Recurrent connections let it factor in what it did previously with what it's going to do now. If it shot at something, turned left instead of right, or applied to thrusters the last time, that's now a consideration in what it's about to do. In the network shown, red connections have negative weights, white have positive weights, blue ones are recurrent, and the thickness of the lines is proportional to the size of the weights. So what about recurrent connections within the exclusive OR solution? Should we use them? Let's first look at a one hidden node exclusive OR solution and how it operates with no recurrent connections present. I brought it into Excel and applied the weights and connections as well as the inputs and outputs from each node in the network. As always, when running the network, we start by loading the inputs for each node and as we have no recurrent connections and as no activation function is applied to the input layer, the input can simply be copied to the output register for each of the nodes. With layer 1 processing complete, we move on to layer 2 and scan through our node array looking for nodes that reside in this layer. When we find one, I zero its input and move to the connection array and look for connections that terminate at this node. I check to see where the connection originated and get the output from that node by going back to the node array and seeing what it is. I then multiply it by the connection weight and add it to the node input. I do this for all connections that terminate at this node. Once I've searched through the entire connection array, I know I've processed all of the connections, so I apply the activation function to the node input, and the return value becomes the node output value, and I update the node array with it. I then go back to the node array to find the next node in this layer, if there is one, and repeat this process. And once I get to the end of the node array, I know I've completed this layer, and move on to the next one. So you can see here with 00, 0 applied to the input nodes, I get this value as the input to node 5, Applying the activation function returns the value between 0 and 1, and that becomes the output for node 5. Node 4 then has four weighted connections as its inputs, which gives me this value. And finally, after applying the activation function, I get the final output. For a 0, 0 input, there should be a 0 output, which it is. Going back and applying a 1, 0 and letting it flow from layer to layer gives me a 1, as expected. It's the same for a 0, 1 at the inputs. And finally, a 1, 1 set of inputs gives me a 0 output. So after applying all of the inputs and running the network, I end up with a final fitness value for that solution. That's the number used to drive the evolutionary process towards an end result. The best it can get to is 4, but once it goes over 3.95, I say it's done 
Before we look at the recurrent exclusive ore example, here's a quick peek at what the ship can do when I tell it about the four nearest asteroids. But start it with one hidden node, so there's very few connections to begin with. It takes a while, but the recurrent connection mutations that persist in the more successful pilots give it the ability to make much better decisions. Here, in this clip, as it reappears in the bottom of the screen, you can see four of the five closest asteroids. Doesn't like the way things are shaping up, fires off a quick shot, does a 180, and gets the hell out of there. I simply don't get that kind of complex behavior without recurrent connections. So let's look at how a solution with a recurrent connection processes the inputs. To get one, I simply set the initial parameters to have one hidden node and disable the add node option during the mutation stage. And of course, I allowed recurrent connections to be added. It yielded this solution and I grabbed the connections and weights from here. The connection 1.5, for example, has a weight of minus 3.14 and connection 5.3 is recurrent. When I bring it into Excel, it looks like this. Now, I need to fudge things a bit here as Excel doesn't have a memory and doesn't know the output from node 5 should reference what happened during the previous iteration and tends to be a bit temperamental with circular references. So I'll store the correct node 5 output down here and use it to calculate the input to the recurrent connection. But I'll display it in the same manner the code would use to process the network. So I process layer 1 nodes as I would any other layer by going through them and seeing if they have any connections in the connections array that terminate there. If they do, then I work out the correct value by grabbing the input to the connection and multiplying it by its weight. There's the added complexity of also adding on the input value for layer 1 nodes, but that's easy to do. So for nodes 1 and 2, they don't have any input connections, so I move them directly to the output as no activation function is applied. Node 3 does have a connection, so I find the node it originates from. In this case, it's node 5. I get the output from node 5, which at this stage is going to be 0, times it by the connection weight, which yields a 0, and add that to the node 3 input. I then copy this to the node 3 output. The rest is the same as before. I go to layer 2, find the nodes that reside there, and work out their input values. Apply the activation function to get the output, and assign it to the output for that node. So 0, 0 for this network gives me a 0 at the output as expected. Now though, the output from node 5 is 0 0.025 and will play a part in determining the network output from the next set of inputs. This only happens when recurrent connections are present, as without them, the signals only flow from left to right through the layers. With that in mind, I go back and enter 1 0 as the input signal and leave the bias value unchanged. Again, I work out the layer 1 node inputs and for node 3, this will again be the bias value of 1 plus the weighted output from node 5. But it's the node 5 output from the 0, 0 signal, which is still 0 0.025. So its memory of what happened before is going to have an impact on what it'll do now. So the layer 1 outputs now look like this, which gives me this value as the input to node 5. Applying the activation function gives me the node 5 output, and I get 0.97 as the network output. I now enter 0, 01 as the network input and get a 0.99, and finally a 11, 1, which yields a 0. Overall, I now have a fitness for this network of 3.96, which is why it stopped at this point and said it was done evolving. So recurrent connections are stored and processed in exactly the same way as ordinary connections. If you allow them in your network and also allow them to connect back to your input layer, you'll need to start at layer one when running the network. It's generally best not to allow nodes to connect back to themselves and to avoid having recurrent connections on the same layer, as their inputs can tend towards infinity if the connecting weights go above one. Allowing recurrent connections to solve exclusive ore will yield some nice solutions, including the one with no hidden nodes, but it's generally not recommended because the solutions found may not be stable as you repeatedly apply the inputs over time due to the memory component. You can see that happening here. Once I find a solution, I ask the network to run the inputs again, and it should return a 0110 output, but it doesn't always work, and it's why Ken states not to use them for the exclusive ore. I hope that was of some use. As always, thanks for watching.